Who's hungry for macaroni and cheese? I'm going to take a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of credit. Only in that my pastoral profile, which is my large uh, uh, resume that goes out to churches or went out to churches when I was in search, actually talks about my love of macaroni and cheese. Prospective churches needed to know what they were going to get, right? <laughs> That's the only credit I take. But apparently at my birthday party, somebody said, he likes mac and cheese. Let's have a mac and cheese meal. Is that how it went? Yeah. You even look like you're wearing mac and cheese colors. Oh, yeah. It was planned. It was planned? <laughs> well, I saw it. <laughs> well, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us, Let us rejoice and eat mac and cheese. Um, so if you don't have any clue what I'm referring to, um, it might mean you're not on the church email. Uh, the, the campsite committee is holding another fundraiser today, which is a, a food-themed, uh, is, it, is it free will? Yeah. yeah, free will donation, eat all you want, vote on the mac and cheeses that you like the best, and then whoever wins gets a small cash prize kind of situation. And, and today, instead of chili, it is macaroni and cheese, which is, you know, if you study the most ancient Greek, <laughs> if you study the most ancient Greek and the stories about how Zeus was born and raised in a cave by a goat and they fed him nectar and ambrosia, I used to mistranslate it. I thought the nectar meant Mountain Dew. I found out that wasn't true. But the ambrosia... A, True story, it's actually translated macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Food of the gods. Uh, that does remind me that the May breakfast is coming up. It is not the 4th of May, it is the seven days after that, which is 11th. Um, thank you to all who have signed up so far. Uh, Beth and Kurt are leading that, and if you want to help out, just go talk to Beth. Were you going to say anything else, or are you just standing for visibility? Oh, did I just take care of it? Okay, cool. Um, on, oh, there's so many things coming up, in the, but I don't need to name them all. Check your email from this week, and if you're not on the church's email list, but you'd like to be, put your email address on one of the visitor cards in the pew thing and put it in the offering plate, and then we'll make sure you get on the list. Um, because on the 19th of May, during coffee hour, we will be celebrating... Tracy Chur, longtime member of this church, who, no, you could totally do that. <laughs> Woohoo! Let me hear, let me hear it. Woohoo! There you go. Who has been our nursery coordinator for 21 years, and she took over for her mom, who had done it for like 25 years prior to that. If I, does that sound right? Yeah. yeah. Um, she's retiring from, from the nursery position, and uh, we're going to celebrate her that day. So, more about that as time comes. Uh, I would like you all to give a warm welcome to Emily Torvik on piano today. <laughs> Emily made the mistake of telling me on her very first Sunday here that she played the piano and would be happy to fill in from time to time. So, <laughs> no, welcome, welcome, so happy. Uh, and, hmm, where did she go? Where's Zilla? Right there, I looked right over her. So, Zilla had a birthday this week, and uh, I'll just say that at her age, she's working a heck of a lot better than Windows 95 ever did. <laughs> and... To, we should do more than just applaud. So happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Zilla. Harmony. Happy birthday to you. She says, don't sing happy birthday to me in church. People don't know who I am. And I said, Zilla, everyone here knows who you are, which now is true. <laughs> which now is true. Check, 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 check. You want to say something? Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Green. 
There are people in this congregation that I had in my Sunday school class when they were three years old. And some of them are already senior citizens, I think. <laughs> we love you, Zilla. Uh, any other announcements that I need to share? You have one? Yes. Well, come up, because I don't know what you're going to say. You never know there is. Still green. And he's the one who always says, listen to what I'm thinking, not what I'm saying. <laughs> so Lent came and went, and we had a quilt project we were working on. And several people have said, oh, I didn't have time to do anything. It's OK. There is no timeline. This is, this is on uh, whenever it gets done time. So if you haven't done a square and you want to do a square, um, if you haven't even really thought about it, that's OK. We're not going to start putting the quilt together until we know that everybody who wants to do a square has done one. If you have any questions about it or need some fabric or need to know the specs, hit me up. So we did a Lent project where every family got to do a six by six square. It could be uh, pieced and quilted. It could be painted, it could be drawn, it could be embroidered, and if you think you can't do it, Crystal learned how to embroider and has blown everybody's socks off with how well she has done. And we're going to put all of these together and make a quilt that represents our church. And the idea behind everybody's square is that it re represents their family in some way. That can be literal, it can be completely random, whatever it means to you. just reached out and grabbed me. <laughs> now are there any more announcements?
Please rise if you're comfortable doing so. And let us continue to proclaim the miracles of Easter with the day of resurrection. If you're going to use a hymnal, take note that in each verse there's some different language so that it is in keeping with what I preached about on Easter, but not all being about conquest. <laughs> Our call to worship. God, the Lord God, speaks and summons the world from the rising of the sun to its setting. From Zion, perfect in beauty, God hears his greatness. Our God comes and is not silent. Fire precedes her, devouring, and around her a whirling wind, storming. She calls us to the heavens above and to earth to love her people. The heavens declare her righteousness. For God is the one who loves. Let us pray. Holy, Holy one, one, give us a spirit of imagination to believe that we are capable of more than we have accomplished. Give us a spirit of confidence that if we can envision it, then we can believe it, and then we can make it so. Jesus showed and promised us that power and love come to those who believe. Help our unbelief. In his name we pray. Amen. Jesus said, let the little children come and let them take a very wide path around these microphones and music stands. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi. Hello, Ayla. No, lightly, gently. There you go. Squished. Everybody wants to sit on the bench part. <laughs> you could sit on the floor. No. Good morning. So in a couple of minutes after you all go off to faith formation, that's, that's after church. That's not during faith formation. Um, Although I suppose we could have done mac macaroni art today, and that would have worked. Um, 
I think what, what, what you're going to do is you're going to learn some more about uh, one of Jesus' very cheese. good, not macaroni and cheese, you're going to learn about one of Jesus' very good friends, uh, Peter. Peter, whose name means the rock. Not to, not to be confused with Dwayne Johnson. Johnson. Right, okay. Um, and there's a story today about how Peter, this was after Jesus had died and risen and then gone up to heaven forever. And uh, they, um, Peter was hanging around in some town someday, and there were people who saw that he was able to like cure people of their diseases, kind of like Jesus did. And they thought, gosh, if we could just even like have his shadow just touch us, we too will be made healed. So I thought, what better way to talk about shadows than with Rorschach tests? You ever seen this kind of thing before? Mac and cheese. Well, you all go down there. You all go down there and turn around so you can see me. What is that? That is the question. That is the. Everybody, sit down. Is it mac and cheese? It is not mac and cheese. Uh, no, it's like you fold a piece of paper and put an ink blot on it, and then you close the paper. And when you open it back up, it makes a weird shape. Wait, what's under, what's under that? So the, there's just more of them. Just more of them. So the real question here is, and you have to raise your hands, what is this a picture of? AJ. A violin. A violin. An ink blot. An ink blot. <laughs> Macaroni and cheese. Macaroni and cheese. Yeah, that's going to be a thing. Ruby. <laughs> A butterfly sitting on the sun? Yeah? Does it look different if I go like that? Yeah. Yeah. What is it now? Don't say it. Turtle under the sun. All right, Warner, go ahead. Turtle under the sun. A turtle under the sun. Go. Looks like a sword. Looks like a sword. What? Who's right? Who's right? What? Nobody. Hmm. What about, what is this? Raise your hands. You're going to say inkblot every time, aren't you? Okay. It's not macaroni and cheese. A dragon? Also a dragon? It's the right way upside down. Yeah, I know what that is. That's obviously a part of like a dress. A person in a dress. What do you see, Luella? A sleeping bat. That's kind of what I see too. Uh, last one. On the way, might do one more over there. A person, a person with a tail that looks like a dragon's head. I thought um, the other one. It looks like an owl sitting on a throne. An owl sitting on a throne. We have plenty more. We have plenty more. Let's go this way. If I point at you, it's your turn. Horns, a demon with horns, appropriate for church. A dog. A window. Something what? Something Beyonce would wear. Sure. What's that? A a what? Oh. Oh. Thank you for the help. Don't. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to stop calling you. <laughs> Mac and cheese. Warner, you're done too. Oh, you're going to say Mac and cheese. Keep it fat. Oh, get your hands off the microphone, please. Oh, boy. All right, so I think maybe we'll just do one more. Oh, I like this one. Okay, shh. All right, we're going to do something. Some of you have not done this with me before. Okay, I'm going to ask you all to breathe in slowly through your nose on a count of five. No, not yet. <laughs> and then we're going to slowly exhale on a count of five, okay? So. Now let it out through your mouth. In. Now with 
a show of hands. Not any voicings, not any voicings. Caden, I'm not going to call on you. A bunch of thumbs up. A bunch of thumbs up. Smiley. Smiley. I'm going for Caden. Ink block. Oh, Yay. yeah, okay. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> what is it? A necklace. A necklace. Are you going to say macaroni and cheese, Warner? No. Okay, I pr you promise? I promise. Okay, you made a promise. What is it? Two ants talking to each other. Excellent. Things look like antennas. Ayla? Um, two black demons with their body connecting. Two black demons. We have a theme here. <laughs> you got one? Oh, you were going to say what she said. Uh, and no. Um, I would say. Flip upside down. Girl's hair. Sure. <laughs> no, that, no, that totally makes sense. Uh, okay, shh. Hands down, hands down. I'm gonna say that I think it looks like angel wings. I think it looks like if you oh, Yeah. So I wanna tell you something. I wanna tell you something about what we believe in this church about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and everything else. We all look at it, we all look at God a little bit differently from each other. We all think about Jesus. A little bit differently from each other. Does that make any one person more right than the rest? No, no. It's an opinion. It's an opinion. It's your perspective. Your pers my perspective on this is that it kind of looks like angel wings. Somebody else said flip it over. It's hair. Somebody else said it was demons. Somebody else said it was ants. And God is big enough to be all these things for all of us. And the way that we are kind to each other is to remember that we all kind of do this church, religion, Jesus, Christian thing a little bit differently. And we can have conversations about it. Once they turn into arguments, it usually means you got to walk away. Yeah. Once, it, once they turn into arguments, you got to walk away. But we can have conversations. And, and the most important thing is that we come to church so that we can work together to find answers to these questions all together so that you don't have to do it alone, which is a nice segue to the song that you're about to hear from this, I almost said string band, from the ensemble that is singing this morning. So, where's my bulletin? Oh, we got to sing amen, amen first. Who was here last week? Show of hands. Okay. Wait. Can you give me the first note? Amen. Amen. Just pick it up with me. Amen. 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 Also, the rest of the congregation. Amen. Snap on the off. Amen. Or clap or beat on your legs.
kids, you can come over here and you can also sit in this row right here while this, while this musical ensemble comes up front. I stood in the night
Quick announcement, as it turns out, we're a little short, more short-staffed than we anticipated this morning for adult supervision in faith formation. And so, unless I can get one or two volunteers to jump up and go back and help with, with Leanne... Okay, Bob Zahn will go. Um, was there... A, were there... No, I, I love your energy, Aiden, but yes? Okay. Sure, thank you so much. Uh, okay, then there are no limits on the... I, I don't have to tell the third, fourth, and fifth graders to stay in worship. Y'all can go. Thank you. Thank you. This is how you do church, right? This is, this is the church loving. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 5, verses 12 through 16. Now many signs and wonders were done among the people through the apostles, and they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared to join them, but the people held them in high esteem. Yet more than ever, believers were added to the Lord great numbers of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats in order that Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he came by. A great number of people would also gather from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all cured." Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. After only being a, uh, a camper at church camp for two years in my youth, which came to an abrupt end when I found out from there, that point thereafter, I would have to sleep in a cabin with a bunch of people I didn't know. <laughs> Too shy. Hard to imagine now, perhaps. Totally a thing back then. Um, I, 17 some years later, which is now about 20 years ago. Um, oh God, that, no, that's about right, yeah. I'm scaring myself with my own math. Um, I returned to church camp, Camp Kaleo in Nebraska, after this very long absence. It was for a fine arts-themed camp, which Crystal, I think, maybe needs to be our theme for next year's youth group. We'll talk more. Yeah, brain theme. Uh, And in that camp, the kids would all, over the course of the week, participate in music, art, drama, and writing. They'd they'd do it twice a day. Once a day, they would be in their self-selected groups where they're like, the same, they'd go to the same element every day. So the, the focus group for art, music, whatever. The other part of the day, I had broken up all of the kids into mixed groups, and then that group would rotate, each group would rotate through all four elements so that they were all exposed to all of the different art expressions that we were exploring. Now, the person who invited me to come to that camp as a counselor, and I'm going to call him Bob because that's his name, Um, (coughs) I'll be here all week, Um, he wanted me to come run the writing group, which I was really reluctant to do. I hadn't been there in a million years. He was asking me to do something I hadn't exactly done before, but I had a massive crush on his daughter, so I said yes. And as it turned out, at that camp, I met his daughter of choice, who was sitting in the back row. So that worked out well. Hoo-ah! Anyway, um, as the writing group facilitator, It was my job to, and again, this might come as a surprise to you all, get the kids writing. (laughs) Now, that was was only an easy task half the time. Because for that group of girls that I had, and they were all girls in the first year, who selected the writing as their emphasis, I didn't have to do a lot. They weren't looking for encouragement. 
I just needed to give them feedback. They were already writing song lyrics and poems and, and all kinds of written things, a lot of them in that first year about Christian Bale, particularly in his role in the musical Newsies, which will be next week at the middle school, by the way. One of our church people will be in the show. Um, but that other group, the kids who did not sign up to do writing, that group was harder because they needed uh, coaching. They needed cheerleading. And the reason they needed that was because a whole lot of them did not believe. They didn't believe that they were capable of writing creatively. I can't even tell you how many people told me that. I can't write. I'm not a writer. I don't know how to do this, is what they'd say. And I had a Pretty good success rate, blowing up those, those myths that they told about themselves, largely because I knew that in order to get them to believe in themselves and their ability to do this, what they needed was me to believe in them. We'd usually start with haikus, because anyone, and I will die on this hill, right? Anyone can string together five syllables, seven syllables, and five syllables and come up with a poem, right? It's not hard. I, one year, I had a lot of fun proving to them how easy it was by on the spot coming up with six different haikus making fun of the Twilight series. <laughs> it's really bad gender rules taught in those books, just not recommended. I mean, that oh, agency of women and men, oh, it's just bad. That's a sermon for another day. Um, so once the kids dipped their toes in the writing pool with these haikus, then they felt like a little more confident and we could go elsewhere. We could go deeper. We could go further. Usually it involved me getting to know them because they'd say, well, I don't know what to write about. So I'd, I'd ask them about their passions, their pastimes, their loves, even sometimes their hurts. I'd encourage them, write about that. One young man, Aaron will know who I'm talking about, one young man who already had a long history in his brief life of disciplinary problems, mental health challenges, and violent tendencies, um, was absolutely convinced that he couldn't write. But turns out he could play football. So I said, what does it feel like when you're there on the line waiting for the snap? Write about that. And of course, you know what happened next. What he wrote was brilliant. And that happened so many times. Kids who, who thought they had no facility with words just kept producing these pieces of writing that would make me weep. And then I would hand them off to the other adult counselors and it would make them weep. And then it all built together toward the end of the week, Thursday night worship, where we brought all these different elements together. And then we're all weeping again because what they wrote was so beautiful and so vulnerable and so painfully honest. It was a very safe space, that camp. It still is today. I don't think any of that would have happened if we didn't believe in them so that they might then believe in themselves. None of those miracles could happen without belief. The Gospels give us all kinds of stories about Jesus healing people. And then in Acts, we're told that his uh, apostles are granted the same power. By implication, just the men. I don't believe that part. You know Mary was healing some people. You know people were coming to Jesus' mom and being like, hey, here I am. But time and again in Scripture, we learn often in Jesus' words that these miracles only work because the person receiving the miracle believes. Today's story from Acts is just one of many in that regard as we read about Peter and the other disciples with their ability to, to do magical healings. We get this line, Kelsey read it, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats in order that Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he came by. I mean, this is like one step beyond the hemorrhaging woman who, who believed if she just but touched the fringe of his garment that she would be made well. Now we're just talking like, can I just get into your eclipse for just a moment? These miracles aren't happening because of Peter. I want you to be aware of that. They're happening because these sick folks believe that the grace of God is so available to them that all they have to do is touch Peter's shadow. 
they think probably that the power is coming from him, but it, he's just like channeling it. They're made well because they have faith. They're made well because they believe. And this is all in keeping with what Jesus says all the time in these healing miracles when he says, it's your faith that has made you well. It's not a one-way thing. It's relational. It's cooperative. It's two-way. He was able to help them because they believed it was possible. Now, it probably won't surprise you that I don't, at least in my personal faith journey, I don't, I don't put a lot of energy into the magical healings. I don't discount that they're real sometimes. I've heard stories, I've heard testimonies from people who say they've been healed miraculously. I've heard enough stuff beyond that to remind me that there is more on heaven and earth than is dreamed of in my theology. And I also want to be you know, really careful when I talk about things like, if you believe you will be healed, because you know, quite obviously, honestly, that, that's not always how it works. I'll come back to that. I do, however, I do happen to believe that the, the human brain has power and capacity that we've never fully understood. And I, and I do think that uh, I honor the many ways humans in this world have tried to harness that power, whether it is through belief or ritual or medicine or, or who knows what else. But again, I want to be careful and clear. Prayers are not always answered in the way that we hope. And if they are, it doesn't happen for everyone. And, and then we start to feel a little awkward at best and tortured at worst, because we start to ask ourselves, well, why, God, did you heal that person, but not this person? Is my belief not enough? Is my, my, are my pray, did I not pray, pray hard enough? Did I not get enough prayer warriors together? That's a thing in the church. So we got to be careful about that. And that's why when I read stories like this, I'm looking for the, what is true in the story apart from the magic, magic stuff. But that doesn't mean I don't put my faith in the miracles because I, I draw a distinction here because I, I think it's a miracle when a teenager who thinks they can't write shows us that they can. I think it's a miracle when a school child who thinks they're not smart enough gets like a good grade on a test or something and then they start to go, wait, if I, you know, do my homework and I ask for help and I do my work, I can do this too. I think that's a miracle. I think it's a miracle when people come together in solidarity and, and cooperation and community and unified effort and successfully change those things that the world told them were un changeable. As a person of faith, I believe that these things happen in some congruence with the Holy Spirit. But a lot of the time, I think it happens because we believe it can be so. Sometimes all it takes is for one person to have enough faith in everyone else, enough belief in everyone else, and then together we can turn our doubts into joy. As a person of faith who bears the label Christian, I, I believe that Jesus was able to achieve miracles because he believed in the people that he loved. People who were told so often that they couldn't. Right? I think it might have been the German theologian Schleiermacher, I love that name, who uh, said that whatever else is going on about Jesus, when people met him, they had a decisive experience of the divine. He also says we don't need to really worry about what that means. It's just that impact he had on people that's the most important. And maybe that impact was those folks realized that here was somebody who 100% believed in them. He loved them. He cared for them. He had confidence in them. He had faith in them. And that belief inspired them to start believing in themselves. It made them start to believe that they could do it, that they were worthy, that possibility was within their grasp. Barack Obama was far from the per first person to say, let's see who was following along. Yes, we can. <laughs> That's all right. At the first service, I had one person figure out where I was going with that. Zach, I thought you'd be there for me. 
Jesus was telling people, yeah, we can, a long time before Obama did. So if you need to hear this today, I believe in you. I believe in each and every one of you, and God does too. Jesus believes in you. The Holy Spirit believes in you. It gives you gifts because it believes in you. The Holy Spirit believes that you are good, that you are strong, however you know, we choose to define that, that you are resilient, that you are imaginative, that you are brave. It's more than that. The Holy Spirit says, I believe in you all. Because that's who Jesus is always talking to. That's who Paul is always talking to. Y'all. Don't read it too personally. Jesus believes in us all. Jesus believes that there is nothing that we cannot accomplish when we work together for the good of the world. Jesus believes, and I don't think he would have told us this stuff about the sheep and the goats and what the difference is between the two if he didn't believe that we can end hunger. That we can end homelessness. That we can provide quality health care for everyone. I know this is starting to sound like a campaign speech, but that we can cure cancer and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and all those other things, heart disease, male pattern baldness. <laughs> we can create a system of justice that addresses crime without tearing down people. We can welcome immigrants and give them a home where they can live out their dreams in safety. We can build a world that is rooted in telling the truth and caring for our neighbors because once we begin to believe that we have that power, we can make it so. They tell us in seminary, you've got to have application at the end of the sermon. I don't always end that way. But, okay, real talk now, folks, right? Imminently, as in like right now, but then you're going to get some communications about this too. You are, you are all going to receive an invitation to make one additional contribution this year to the church. Beyond any of those other things that you expect, pledge, special offerings, things like that. We talked about this actually at our annual budget meeting back in January. The short of it is that we, we drew down our rainy day fund, also known as the Vanguard fund. It's our mutual fund. Uh, we drew that down because we had to replace all of our rooftop air conditioners, three units. We put that wonderful ramp on the back of the church. We spent $43,000 out of our... Um, Vanguard Fund, and some additional thousands of dollars that were a bequest from Bob Gordon. Thank you, Bob. Um, and we want to replace, we, we, want to, we want to preserve our capacity to be able to cover those immediate expenses. So we want to put some money back in there. So that the next time the, the unexpected large expense hits, we have the capacity to do it. Now, as it happens... That next expense has already reared itself up. We know what it is. Uh, it turns out we're not going to just be able to patch the parking lot. We need to actually fully replace that thing. It's going to cost $30,000. No, it's okay. It's okay. I believe in you. <laughs> I mean, that's where I was going with this anyway, but it's true. So here's the thing. We had a really deep, we had a really deep serious conversation about this Tuesday night at council. And uh, we considered changing the ask for this mini capital campaign of 55,000, and we decided not to. The market's been really good to our Vanguard fund. Some of, the, some of that drawdown has been replaced in value, if not in the number of shares. So we're still gonna ask for $55,000 from the congregation. 25 of that will go back into the Vanguard fund, and 30 will just pay for the parking lot right off the bat. I'm happy to say that at my last check, I know I've had people speak to me which means we have commitments of already exceeding 5,000, 5,000, 5, 10%, that's the word I wanted to say. I know we're already over 10% commitment just from a handful of people. So you're going to be getting a request about that. And I want you to know about that. Because I do not want you to be misinformed. 
I acknowledge that there is anxiety in the church about all this kind of stuff. Amen? Amen. Can I get an amen from the members of the Board of Finance? (laughs) (laughs) And and that adds to other anxieties that we always have in the life of the church, especially nowadays about the size of the church and the pledging and attendance and budgets and all of these other things that we worry about. But I believe that we will meet these needs. I'm not... I mean, it's a terrible thing that somebody decided being really confident like that was Pollyanna. Like, really, you're going to name that negative thing after a girl who just had a really strong streak of optimism? It's a good Disney movie, too. But I believe that we will meet these needs. I believe that we will continue to maintain our church, this extremely vital and healthy church. I don't even think you all know how healthy our church is relative to most other churches, denominationally or otherwise. This is an extremely healthy church. church. Your moderator just said so, so you know it's true. (laughs) I believe that we will maintain that health, that we will grow in all the ways that growth happens, which also includes size and in our capacity to meet our financial needs. And I believe, partly because I see it happening all the time, I believe that we will continue partly by virtue of our very advantageous geography on a main street in, May, in, in, in Maine, Minnesota. No, Main Street in Anoka, Minnesota, that we're going to continue to get all kinds of visitors. And some of those visitors will stick around for the long term. And then some of those visitors will invite their friends or their parents who live in California to, to come hang out with us. And that some of those friends will invite other friends. Or maybe it's just that they'll have a baptism and then some friends will come to that baptism and then they'll stay and make chicken southwestern soup for the soup supper on the, after only having been to church twice. That is very specific. If you need to know who it is, she can tell you herself. Because I believe that God has a vision for this congregation. And that when we, when we work together to execute that mission, we will spread so much good news in the North Metro. We will, let me reframe that. We will continue to spread so much good news in the North Metro that our anxiety will never be as loud as our belief. I believe. Do you believe? Do you believe? Have I scared you all into silence here? Do you believe that is a yes or no question? Yes. Oh, there it is. Just once more for the live stream. Do you believe? Yes. Okay. You're not supposed to smack the pulpit. You're not supposed to point people either, and I do that all the time. Uh, Let all the people say. Amen. Because we live by faith and not by sight, apparently. This is like some old American shaker tune or something like that. I probably shouldn't have handed Emily a, uh, a hymn on a Sunday, on her first Sunday with us, that was scored in 3-2. <coughs> huh? Gonna it's going to be, it is going to be good, I believe. <laughs> we also had first service, so, you know. Uh, but I recommend that you use the hymnal on this one for the counting. And hopefully at this service, I will not miscount it while I am leading the hymn, which is totally a thing that happens.
just had belief we had practice. <clears throat> oh, I'm going to sit down for a sec. We're going to pray now. And for I'm looking around the room, I feel like most people know how this works, but I'll explain it anyway because that's welcoming. Somebody from the diaconate is going to come up here in a, just a second and grab the microphone. It's Lori. I'll help you if she gets it. Bob is helping out with the yeah. children's time, <laughs> children's stuff today. She's going to come. It's white. She's going to come around with the microphone to anybody who raises their hand, and you can share your. So it's on. He will make sure that oh. it, it is on. He'll make sure it's live uh, to share your prayer with the congregation because, as I said, as they sang, well, they're all gone. You are not alone. So if we are to have any achievable, miraculous result of our prayers, it will be because we have raised them together in a community that has the giftedness and the power to make things happen. Tina had her hand up. Two things, um, just a celebration. Abe's got her license on Monday, passed first try. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, and um, for everyone's safety. Uh, uh, secondly, um, really need your prayer. Um, our son, Eli, <laughs> just please pray for his mental health. We had a crisis this week, and we really need your prayers. Thank you. God in your love. A uh, quick prayer for two of my neighbors, uh, one that is in the hospital with uh, heart problems, and the other one went to the uh, emergency room last night, and uh, they had to break the door down to get to get uh, into her apartment. And but so pray that everything turns out well. God in your love. Hear our prayer. I'll share one prayer request. Um, Kelsey and I were having a chat this morning. That's not the prayer. <laughs> but she had, a, she had a conversation. She was, works as a chaplain-esque kind of thing. There's elements of chaplaincy in it, but she's an activities director at a place where folks go to retire and whatnot, and I, of course, do this. And we've both been asked before, what do you do when you're grieving? Well, the answer is you share it. Because <laughs> otherwise, if you had seen me when I came into the church this morning, you'd have thought, who, who spilled your Cheerios this morning? I know that's not the statement people usually use. I got the news last night that a friend of mine had died. He was a fraternity brother of mine. He pledged the year after I graduated, but I was still around, so I was able to become close with him. At first, appreciate that he insisted on calling me by the name of my twin brother and vice versa. He thought it was funny. Over time, my twin brother and I both came to see it as just the way he expressed love and affection. And... Uh, he won't ever do that again because there was a, I, I don't know all the details. I'm guessing it must have been at his house. There was a fire. He tried to put it out himself. Call 911. Get out of the house and call 911. Your stuff is not as important, right? He failed to put out the fire and to escape. And uh, so my whole fraternity is really reeling with that. And uh, I had a real rough night with the with the grief from that. So uh, his name was Josh, and uh, I would just simply ask you to all uh, pray, send good vibes, whatever works for you, to his friends and his family. He's got, I know, at least one young kid and, and whatever else, because uh, that's crap. That's just, that's, that's awful. But I'm doing much better by second service because I have been buoyed by the love of a congregation 
that helps me carry that burden. That, like the song said, I didn't have to be alone in it. That's church. God in your love. Let's just pray in the way Jesus taught us, saying, however, whatever version of this is, is the closest to your heart. Our, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, I brought up the capital campaign. This isn't that. This is just the offering. Not just the offering. This is our weekly offering. Although there was a person at the first service who handed me a pile of cash. A pile. That makes it sound like a ton. Handed me some bills and said, this is for the capital campaign. So I went and marked it up and put it in the safe. That's cool, too. But um, this is our, our weekly offering right now so that we can continue to proclaim the good news.
I'm not going to name them. We've got to go eat mac and cheese. <laughs> Let the song we are about to sing be a blessing upon the meal we are about to share. Because I believe that that mac and cheese is going to be lit. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Amen.